meeting of the Gardner Planning Board, which began at 3 p.m. with a uh, site walk of the Concord Crossing open space residential development proposed. Uh, first item of business, let's approve uh, minutes from March 22nd and March 29th. If I could have a motion to that effect. Make a motion, Mr. Chairman, we approve the minutes. Do we want them separately or two different votes? I think we can, I think we can lump 22nd them together. 22nd and 29th is uh, presented. Second. Motion made and seconded to accept the meeting minutes from March 22nd and March 29th. Uh, any discussion? Hearing none by voice vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. Yep. Yes, sir. Okay, good, thank you. All right, as noted for the record, uh, we just came back from a site walk off Clark Street and Century Way for the uh, proposed Concord Crossing open space residential development. And uh, this next item on our agenda is the pre-application discussion. We're running a few minutes late, uh, but that's fine. And I believe Mr. Forgive me, your name. Bliss. Bliss. I believe you gentlemen are going to be uh, presenting to us. Sure. Any preliminaries, Mr. Beauregard, before I turn the floor over to them? Nope. Wait, nothing right now. Thanks. Gentlemen? So I think what we're, we're trying to get a sense of and what we're hoping we can accomplish is we're, we're trying to um, process the application and the submittal based on the uh, procedures and the criteria that are set out in the Open Space Residential Development Regulation. And what we're hoping we can accomplish uh, today is to just get some direction from the board because what we would like to do is present a preliminary plan um, so that we can continue to get information, uh, understand what the issues are that need to be addressed, but more importantly, we're hoping that we can develop a sense as to um, the number of lots um, that we're proposing um, and that the board is comfortable with that based on what can be done by right in a traditional uh, plan and what can be proposed based on the open space regulations. And I think if we can get that sense, uh, we would then be in a position to take this a little uh, next step further and actually propose a preliminary plan to bring it back to further discussion. All right, so uh, zoning under Article 8 uh, of uh, Special Residential Regulations. Um, have you considered um, any sort of amenities within the development? We have not yet. I think it's, I know, two years ago now, right, when they were in front of you before. Just to talk about walking trails, but that hasn't been, I don't think we're to that point yet. That was some of the conversation we want to have with the board. And I think even I know the land trust is here too also, who owns a budding property. So I think it might be best to have that conversation also as we move along in this process to see what kind of amenities should be included as, as part of this. I know there's an outline in your regulations on what kind of amenities are allowed, but we have not got to the point that we're proposing anything in, in solid yet. Um, Ms. Chen, Please, Ms. Pico. Uh, so maybe we can start by uh, just, um, I know we've talked a little bit about the site context map, the existing condition site analysis map that's outlined in, in the zoning. Um, walking the site today, I think we saw a lot, a lot of natural features of the site that, um, you know, I think would be helpful to have on a, on a plan, on one of those plans, um, just to need it so we have a better understanding where those, features are the, the log rooms, existing um, roadways on the site, any um, larger um, pockets of, of, of uh, mature vegetation. Um, right, that I, know, I, I know we talked about this before too, even when you're on the property. So, yeah. and I know Trevor, you asked that question in an email and, and we weren't trying to ignore you. We thought we'd have better have a just conversation with you and the board at the same time about that. And just to kind of give you an idea of what 
the reason I'm, I'm showing you guys this point first is to kind of have an idea of what, at least when we looked at the site, what we were trying to accomplish by our design and then have the conversation with the board and see if you agree with, I guess, some of our, our points and then figure out if, or at least as Peter said, move it in the right direction. Yeah. And I know some of the other comments you have had to do with a preliminary and a, a special permit application. We're not to that point yet. So that's, I guess, at the end of the meeting, we want to wrap up with that and to get to that next point. But I think, at least when we were looking at it for a site, site context map, I think we were looking at it a little different than you were. Because when I was looking, you know, I looked at it and, and the applicants and, and Peter, you know, we all kind of sat down and talked about the site, knowing what you guys talked about two years ago, what the EBAs talked about, trying to, uh, you know, the, the concerns that it came back during this EBA hearings from the abutters, trying to kind of work everything that we've heard so far into a concept plan, right? Bring to the, bring to the board uh, at least start their conversation on, as Peter said, number of lots and the layout of the development. And, and so the first couple things that we looked at were obviously the wetlands on the property, which I have highlighted in blue. Um, obviously that's that's the, one of the big, I think, keys on the site is all the wetlands out there and where they're located, where the, the wetlands are located closer to the, the open space that the city gardener owns. And I, I know eventually the city gardener open space ties into the land trust property also. Um, and so then the other area that we're looking at is, I know one of the maps that I, I sent you was just your zoning map that showed it, it had the overlay districts on it. One of the overlay districts on it was the watershed protection district, which is up in the, in the back corner here. That's another area that we are looking at, obviously, to protect um, as, as we we're developing the open space plan. Um, and so those are, the, I guess, the two biggest points that we we're looking to protect is this. We understand the comment about, as we were walking, before we walked in, you talked about mature trees. But because the site was already thinned out there before, we, that wasn't necessarily a thought in our, our mind about groupings of mature trees because we knew it was thinned in the past. We knew there was a, a fair amount of cot roads and, and logging trails out there. And so that, that wasn't as, as much of a concern as those areas that I were talking about, the wetlands and, and the, the watershed protection zone. And then obviously looking at it from a design standpoint, and I know also talk in regulations, some of the steeper slopes. There's not a lot of steeper slopes out here, but some of the areas that are are adjacent to the wetlands. We obviously wanted to keep away from the steeper slope as much as we could. Um, makes it easier to develop, or, you know, to be selfish from the developer standpoint. Obviously, they don't want to put the steeper slope. It just makes it a lot easier, cheaper to develop, correct? And so, like I said, the only uh, there are a couple of areas that we have to that are steeper. Yes, there are to get access into the site. But then, when we laid out the project, we were trying to stay in the areas that aren't as steep, areas that aren't you know associated with the wetlands. We tried respecting the the wetlands that none of the wetlands would be on any of the open space lots that. We understand that the, the city obviously has their no touch zone and their no build zone. So we respect those areas also as part of this to make sure that, you know, we might be showing 76 lots, but I want to make sure I was showing 76 lots that you could build on. I know the previous plans that you had, I think that you saw was like 93 lots that didn't, you know, took into account some of the other stuff that you had been asking to take off of them. That's what we were trying to do also. So if, if you want, I don't know how, what, what steps you want to take on this. We could talk about the existing conditions first. If you want to talk about the conventional plan, uh, or if you want to talk about just the open space plan, it's it's up to however the board wants to see it. Or I don't know, Trevor, if you if you want to talk about certain things, you know we can we can go through these items item by item. And and, and I think that's the whole point that we've been trying to have this meeting is we want to have these conversations, and get all this information on the table, so we know the next steps to take. Yeah, so Mr. Chairman, for me. Yes. So, um, are you so the steps under the special permit? Um, I know I highlight, highlighted them a couple times too under five, yep. two A, B, and C, and D. Yep. That's kind of how you how you've conceptualized. Well, what the site, what the existing site conditions are, how you kind of conceptualize the positioning of the houses, and, and then the roadways. the roadways, and so backing into what you came up with as a Developable proposed. In, in yeah. So are you are you um, um, are you able to go through that process I, I tonight? Definitely, or I definitely go through, yeah, exactly. Do you that's, have, that's why I want to, that's why I brought the plans. I brought some extra bigger copies too if the, if the board wants yeah. the bigger copies in front of them, if you, unless you don't want to, you know, keep looking at that, whatever you guys want to look at. So the, the only, the only, you know, not necessarily an issue I have, but the only concern I have is we don't see everything, at least the plan that I had, that, that we were given yeah. and the plan I see up there, we don't see everything existing on the site and so um you know do you you know the the cot roads that we the logging so roads that we saw we, we and, can add those to the plan for yeah. reference purposes so when we submit our preliminary subdivision plan or simply I, I, I call it a preliminary subdivision plan because we're going through a subdivision process also as along with special permit 
and, and I think it's important to have that on the plans now to go through the process because it actually helps you because it's 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 part of why you positioned houses in certain areas and and the roadways and all that. So we didn't position the well. I guess we didn't position the roads to follow the car roads, though. No, 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 so, no. I'm that's just one one aspect of it. Right. So I guess the, when we looked at it, what I'm showing is yeah. the grade of the land, and I could kind of I, I guess what you better show in that plan would be right is. Obviously, we heard from the abutters during the ZBA process. They came out and voiced their concerns, even with the ZBA process. And so we heard those concerns. A lot of the concerns had to do with traffic, but obviously, everybody has concern about putting development in their backyard. And so we wanted to create a buffer between this development and the existing homeowner. And so that's why we talked about on the property about having a 100 foot buffer of natural growth between the residences on Century Way and the new development. And so that kind of created our boundary here. We are choosing the small lot sizes to minimize our footprint of this development, being 8,000 square foot lots. And so we looked at, all right, what could they build for units on here? Could they li live with an 80 foot wide by 100 foot deep lot? Um, and that's what we started to work with. And that's kind of how we started our, our roadway and lot grid in this direction. And looking at where it sat, the majority of them sat fairly well. Like I said, you could kind of see we were staying away from the, the wetland here, and the wetlands up here. We didn't want to, you know, we looked at different iterations of trying to bring a road in, and, but it didn't make sense for us to, to include this area in that roadway network of the lots. And so we were trying to stay away from that. The same thing with this area over here. I tried staying as far as I could away from these, but really this 100 foot buffer zone, and then also following some of the rules regulations in regards to the radiuses, radi radii of the, the center lines and, and so forth, it really dictated how that road would come in in the entrance. And so, you know, the, the site constraints, or, you know, when I say the 100 foot buffer zone, it's not a site constraint, but it's a self imposed self, you know, site constraint because we wanted to provide that as part of this development to kind of, you know, provide some separation between this and the abutters. You know, as we set them up in the, the sidewalk, if that 100 foot buffer goes away, it, it only helps the developers because it's less road frontage. Um, but we, we look at it as an amenity from this project to the, to the neighbors that there's a 100 foot buffer between this project and them. And then, like I said, when we started laying out everything, started looking at the calculations that you have under the, the zoning bylaw, be it you know, the open space requirement, uh, making sure that we took into account some extra space in the open space that we know in it, when we get to the design of this, we'll need for the stormwater. You know, so so when, we, when we laid this out, it really kind of laid, out, laid itself out. Um, where, like I said, we were trying to stay away from the resource areas, keeping out the watershed protection district up here, not touching that. You know, keeping, like I said, almost two thirds of the site adjacent to where all your open space is. Um, and, and we thought that that layout would work best for all parties involved, um, being the abutters, you know, the, the applicant obviously, and, and then the city and how you're trying to develop your open space, um, where all your open space is located. And that's kind of the way we located the, the development. You know, like I said, we look at a couple different iterations, but we didn't think the, any of the uh, iterations were any better than what we're showing you here to, to meet the requirements that under your regulations, but also knowing what the, the neighbors have complained about. And now, I, I know the, a big complaint from the neighbors it has been traffic. We're not going to address it on this plan, but they've already, you know, we already have a, a draft traffic report done. Mm -hmm. And when we get to the, the preliminary and the special permit application, we'll have that traffic report for the board to look at. Um, but that traffic report needs to be finalized when a, a number of units gets mm -hmm. finalized, right? Yeah. Um, and so they, they've already done that report on the, the, the plan before where the numbers are worse, right? I think the previous plan was like 92 lots. Yeah. And so I, I can get into a little bit of the math too if you want to, just so everybody's comfortable in where we got to the number of units. But I, I think if I could, Wes, sure. to, your, to your point, Trevor, I think we have a majority of the information um, that you're interested in, that you're raising as far as 5-2-A, B, and C is concerned. Um, because some of the preliminary identification of the wetland areas, a lot of the conservation areas, um, we have that primarily identified. Um, the idea was to at least have the board be able to visualize <coughs> the area we're proposing to actually develop. Mm -hmm. And then if, if we can get a sense from today's meeting that yes, you know, we understand, we, we know how you got there, then we can start to add the other stuff on the plan that you're, you're referencing. Because I think as far as 
identifying the major um, areas of the entire site so the board can develop a sense as to what we're doing, how we arrive between the conventional plan and, and what we're going to propose as an open space plan. I think we have that, and if we can develop that sense, it'll just be a continuing process of developing and adding the other stuff as we go along. Yeah, I think that we, we accomplished a lot of that on the site walk today, too. And just, uh, just to bring your attention, the site context map and the existing conditions site analysis map, those are two things that I think need to be, I know you gave us the GIS maps uh, and I, substitutions I, 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 to that, but I think we need to work on that to identify the existing site conditions that are out there today. Yeah. A lot of what we saw today, but a lot of what we didn't see because we never we didn't go beyond the the open space development area. So Correct. just so the planning board has and, and the public has a better idea of what's out there yeah. beyond that. And um, and I think that's gonna help us understand better too how you've backed into this Development and how you've got there. It's important to distinguish between like the logging ro roads versus maybe where a walking trail or some type of an integrated trail might actually exist <coughs> way up in the back of the property. Yeah, I mean, there were definitely, it was more than a logging road down on the, I, I, think, I think you're right, Peter. Uh, yeah, it's, it's in here, and so it, so actually, actually, I think it's. Oh yeah, maybe it was halfway. It, it, yeah, yeah. It's in here. It's, 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 it's into in the development. Yes. But, it, but it, it takes a it takes a turn into yeah. the development, and so like I said, it does show on one of the old land plans. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So just seeing that superimposed yeah. onto the you know, site that, context map would be and, helpful. Interesting. You know, one of the reasons I kind of provided you the aerials is it wasn't necessarily for our project; it was more for the neighboring property. Because I know there's a lot of open space around yeah. here. You asked about amenities, and I think the the conversation really is about the, the trails that ha occur on the other properties, right? Yeah. And how we can maybe tie in, I know you've mentioned that in the past, about tying those into this development. And that's why I want to show you the aerials, because we're, we're not going to topo everybody else's property around, but well, the, the yeah. aerial gives us yeah. an idea of, okay, this is an open space parcel, this yeah. is an open space parcel. You guys have a better idea of where, than we do of where all the trails are. And it's, it's great that the, the land trust is here also, so we can have a conversation about you know, what trails are important, maybe something that we can tie into the, the design of this. But again, like as Peter said, we're, we're, we're trying to get to a, a number, right? A number of lots that everybody is, okay, okay, well now we have a number of lots. Does a lot line shift here and there to maybe provide access for a walking trail or whatever the case? Yeah, we can, we can you know, we're not, we're not having, we don't have a definitive plan in front of you. We're not, nothing yeah, set in we're stone. We're not married right? to this. We're, right? We're, it's, 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 the, the footprints, the footprints there, but it's, it's, you know, we can move things around here and there to make it work. So, Mr. Chairman, do you think to, to uh, <clears throat> um, do you want to talk about how they backed into and, and came up with this type of layout? Do you want to? Well, I think I said, um, I, could, I could tell you about the, the map part of the number of lots, and I think we talked about it quickly at the last meeting, but there was no, we didn't really talk about it too much. But I can kind of go over the, at least the calculation with regards to your zoning within the open space and, and what the maximum density is, and then now where we are and why we get to that number of 76 instead of the Please. maximum. So just, I'm curious. Sure. So on the on the plan, so the total total area I think is just under 90 acres, and so when you divide that out by the 40,000 square foot per lot or per unit, that's how it's worded per unit. Correct. So, so it's 93 units is the max we can get out here. Correct. Really, the restricting factor out here is the open space and how that's worded. And so the open space has to be 50% of the the parcel, but exclusive of, of wetlands, floodplains, and land set up aside for buildings, roads, and parking. Okay, so that's that becomes the restricting factor for this property. And so when when I started backing out that number, and then started looking at, okay, I, I need to set, set aside 50% of that for open space, that requirement comes up to about 1.87 million square feet of property. Okay, which, which really reduces really what 93 lots at 8,000 square feet. We were trying to look at it as single family lots. Really, that's the way that these guys want to develop it. You know, we talked about doing duplexes out here because those are also, you know, I know there's some wording in the regulation about doing different kind of housing out here, but really the developer would like to do single family dwell dwellings. Because at one point we talked about, all right, well, here's the footprint that we can have. We have almost two acres more of open space within this layout because we know there's going to be some <coughs> stormwater improvements that you can't include as part of that open space calculation. And so we did toy around with the idea of duplexes out here also to get to that 93 units. But really, the developer wants to do single-family units. 
And so when we looked at the way the, the area counts work for the open space requirement, it really came back to the 76 units. Like I said, we're setting aside, and I have it on here, about 77,414 square feet of open space for drainage. Um, I know that was some of the conversation that Trevor and, I, Trevor and I have had during this process is, I know the previous plan two years ago showed this entire <laughs> parcel being included, right? Including area outside of the RR district. We made sure we took that out. We're just looking at the area within the RR district when we're doing our calculations. So we're, that's why we're at 93 units and not 96 as was before. Now we're looking at open space. Well, before this was part of the open space calc. So now we have a little less space we can use for open space. So now that's being really shrunk down even more of our development. And then the previous the, the plans that you saw also included stormwater in the open space, but didn't exclude that area out of there. And so when we were looking at you know, how we got from 92 on the first plan that you guys saw back down to 76, really those areas start to, to work their way out, and, and that's kind of where we got to that 76 units. And like I was telling you before, really the footprint of this started with a 100 foot buffer zone and started with trying to keep everything out of the wetlands, knowing that we had to you know, work with the city's you know, uh, no touch zone and the no build zone. Um, to make sure that all these lots could be built on, not, they're not, they're not cartoons, right? And some of the, uh, you know, I've seen plans in the past where people will show a lot, but you can't build on it if you look at all the regulations. And so that's when we were looking at, when I was looking at trying to lay these out, they're buildable lots, right? You know, I can go to the cons and say, okay, you know, we're out of your 30 foot no touch zone, out of your 60 foot no build zone, such that we can meet those requirements also when we deal with the Conservation Commission at a later date. And so that's kind of how we, we laid this set out. And, and yeah, it, did it benefit us that you know some of the cart roads are close to it? But we weren't necessarily concerned about the cart roads. We were concerned about keeping it within that footprint, away from all the resource areas, and, and keeping it keeping that buffer there, um, and, and knowing that they did thin the trees out here, so we're not we're not doing a lot of land clearing too, uh, a lot of tree clearing, uh, where it gets it gets more mature as we move back onto the site, as uh, you know they didn't thin as much of the, the property in the rear there. So that's kind of how. You know, everything kind of worked hand in hand. There was the, the math part of it, but also the layout part of making sure we meet some of the rules and regulations. So there, there was a lot of things going, at, you know, in play there that we had to work with. Um, a lot of the different regulations, be it your ORSRD regulation, your, your subdivision rules regulations, and wetlands bylaws. So there was a lot of things going into play to lay this out the way we did. And so that's, that's where we get to that number of 76 um, single family lots. And that's, you know, where the, the developer wants to go is, is the single family lots. They don't want to do the the duplexes or anything like that and get to the 93 units where, like I said, at one point we talked about that. You know, we, we have a footprint of usable space. Do we want to show 93 units or do we want to show 76 lots? And that's what we're proposing to do, 76 lots. Well, following your whole train of thought and your computations, I, I don't have a quibble with 76, but I'm just one per man. No. Questions from the board? And I, I, if I could just make one other point. This proposal, um, based on how many lots could be obtained on a traditional plan it's only a ten, 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 a ten, more lot, a ten lot difference ten so it's not um sub, so substantially more than it, it's um 20 isn't it i thought you had 56 66 units you can do on there because within the gr3 you can do two places by right oh. units yeah but lots i'm talking well we look at we were looking at units because we're comparing 66 to 93 units and what's what somewhere's in the middle is really what we were looking at but if you're looking at doing a single family let's you know you keep it single family it's 56. It's and, and, but even that's not um like a substantially uh more of a, of right. no, a I, density I, yeah, yeah. increase and it I, really is i don't disagree yeah and, that, and that's what we were looking at like 56 93 and kind of somewhere's in the middle i think that was the number we always talked about too is we need somewhere's in the middle i think of those two numbers So uh, I guess um, my question would be, I, I know you talked about the traffic, you're going to have a study. I mean, we obviously, we already know which direction the traffic's going to go. Uh, once, once you get out that development, they're all taking a left, they're all going up yeah. towards Garden. Yeah. So whatever, how many lots you have there, whenever we're proposing, the traffic is all going to go in one direction. Correct. So you, it, it's going to be a bottleneck with all these houses. So if you have 76 lots, uh, times two vehicles per unit. You, that's the rule of thumb. So they look at trips per day. I think it's, it, yeah. depending on the size of the development, I think around this is either 10 to 12 trips per day. 
Is yeah, what they I look at yes. the peak and all that that's stuff. So I, could, I could just tell you that yeah. they're, they're not they're not leaving does. they're not leaving that's oh. they're not taking a right. I can't and I know they're all they're taking a left. And they're not coming out of here unless it's this person yeah. maybe comes out that way. That's about it. Well, from Century Way yes. all the way down and from Clark Street, they're all taking a left. And nobody's going right unless they're going to the fishing gun club. That's, right. that's yeah. about yeah. it. Right. And, uh, and and good. yeah, and my, my second thing would be, uh, you know, eight thousand square foot lots. It's kind of jamming these houses in there. Uh, I would think that if we would like to make a nice development, we would like to spread it out. Just I, I like the concept. Don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to move, move it up, right, left, rear. I'm trying to leave everything the way. But I like to see more spacing in between. So that obviously be alleviating uh, some of the lots. So maybe ten thousand or the frontage. You know, you have your eight thousand right there. Maybe so in the lots. So I think we have too many lots. That's just uh, my opinion. That's too many lots, 76. I would like to narrow that down, but that's up to the board also. Uh, so 8,000 square feet, it's not a very big lot for somebody to put a house on. And, well, and, and, uh, so so I, would, I, would, yeah. I would something around the 10,000 or the frontage anyway uh, on, on the sides. Well, the, the problem is you create the frontage, bigger frontage, you create more roadway, correct? So, so well, not necessarily. I'm talking roadway. maybe on the sides and uh, yeah, from, so that, from side to side. Yeah, and that's what we're looking at is if you would create, so if every lot became 100 feet wide and eight still 8,000 square foot lots, then we create 20 feet more frontage of each, each unit. And so we create another, you know, what, 1,500 feet of roadway. So Well, I'm, no, no, so what I'm getting at is is I'm not trying to, uh, the frontage, the back, I'm, I'm, it's okay where it is. I'm just talking side to side. Yep. So somehow, if we could make it a little bigger from so side to side. Increase the frontage, in, keep the lots, keep that's the correct. roadway that's layout the same. That's correct, increase that's what I'm trying to say. Increase the frontage. So uh, you're asking me how many lots, I don't know how many lots that would shrink. Each uh, lot like would shrink. Uh, simple math, you're asking for a quarter reduction of lots, and I can, so, so I know. Just, just to compare apples to apples. I don't want to compare to apples, sir. I just, the, the, I just the, want to know what it would be then if you okay. quarter so, lot. And, and maybe we don't look at the whole site in that aspect. Maybe we look at the, the part of the area that backs up to the open space in that aspect, like well, the, the back lots, road, the loop. Some of the lots where they, like, there are a couple of lots that have to be wider because when you abut the open space, you have certain different offsets. Yes. And so a couple of the lots over here are a little bit bigger than they have to be uh, in, in different orientations because they, you know, your offsets are there. Right. So, so just so you understand, when we look at lots or developing lots like this, mm -hmm. with the sewer and water out here, so we're gonna tie into the municipal sewer and water. Yes. So that's why when we look at a, a lot size, an 8,000 square foot lot, it isn't out of the ordinary because we're looking at a 60 foot wide envelope, in a, you know, a deep enough envelope that they can make the houses work. And it's not gonna be, they don't all have to be a, a colonial, it can be a different style home that fits onto that, onto that envelope of the home. And so we are trying to, to meet that, you know, 8,000 square foot. And I understand that. I mean, you look at your uh, rural residential three, I mean, they're asking at 12, even single families, 12,500 yeah. square feet for a single thing, family. Right. And, that's, and that's what we look, we look, so, we look at the conversation. We look right. at the GR3, it's 8,500, right? So that's... Right. And all I'm asking is maybe we can, uh, well, like you mentioned, maybe get, open it up a little bit more, a little bit more room in between the, the houses this way. Yeah, not that. that way, not frontage. Uh, I mean, yeah. I like the concept. I, don't get me wrong. Yeah. So if we were to leave it like that and if we were to change the frontage to 8, 100, 100 feet, we're going to lose a quarter of the lots. And I think it's, I know the applicants aren't going to be happy about losing a quarter of the lots. And again, maybe huh? not the whole development, but may, maybe a portion of the development and just to come to some type of, you know. I can just tell you the residents don't like 76 lots. We're going to have a hard time well, pushing that. Right. Uh, I, I, know, I know the residents aren't going to like five lots. They don't, that's correct. So and, but we're, we're here as citizens of Gardner and well, planning board. So I, we're I, trying I, to make it fair for everybody, and correct? That, and that's, and and that's, that's why, why we're, we're trying asking to for, we're not asking for 94 units, we're, we're coming to a why, number of 76. So <laughs> I that, and I said, that's why we, we looked at the idea of duplexes, but we're looking at 76 single family lots where it fit right. in more with what's out there. I mean, I know there is some multifamily dwellings here, but over here there's the smaller lots. Yep. Um, the second next street over at Brookside is the smaller lots. Um, I'm just saying, I'm just trying to help you guys out yeah. also. And I'm trying to be fair for the citizens and the residents that live on Clark Street, Century Way, Brookside, uh, the, even the people who live on Leo Drive, we talked about that. Anybody who lives in that area. 
76 lots is a lot of homes for that area. I know, you said the same thing, and I understand. Yeah. Nobody wants anything yeah. in their backyard. Yeah. I get it. That's, 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 nobody wants anything in their front yard. Yeah, no, nobody uh, wants Leo Drive, nobody wants Bricks Drive. That's Leo correct. Yeah, so that's, that, and that's correct. Yeah. So I'm not disagreeing with you there. Yeah. But I'm just saying, uh, try to be fair for everybody, if we yeah. can we'll but, and, and eliminate why, some of these lots. Well, I, I think, uh, yeah, I, that's my opinion. If I could just make one more point, Trevor, and I know we'll go to the sure. And that was one of the reasons we were trying to keep this separate mm -hmm. from everybody provide that 100 buffer zone. And I know we talked about it on the, on the site, is if, if, if we were to do this type of development, we're creating these parcels here so that the yes. other residences and, and that's perfect. would have a little more space there. So there's a little more buffer there that's correct. for these residents here. So we're creating a little more buffer. That's right. So it, yeah, these lots yeah. are gonna be smaller, but it's not gonna seem as bad to, to the residents over here. Yeah, and, and I understand that. I'm not, I'm, and we appreciate what you did for those people that are on our century way, you give them a buffer. And then, and of course, this design, it uh, creates more of Clark Street for those residents going towards Pearly Brook, so they don't have these houses in back of them as right. your your other plan had on residential. Uh, well, and, and that's but it was we had to do it right. We, that's yeah. correct. We asked you to do that. That's yeah. fine. Yeah. But all I'm saying is, 76 lots is a lot of lots. Uh, somehow, I think the board. I'm not too sure what. So, we can talk I would, about al this I would again. also make the point that this is private property. Right. Um, well, I, I, but it's it's still up to us to. to so if I may, Mr. Chairman, on, on Paul's first point on the traffic concern, I, I, yeah. I get it. So what we're going to be requesting is a third party reviewer on that anyways, uh, to review that, probably the stormwater, um, maybe even the aspects of meeting, you know, the, the open space residential development guidelines, but that, that's something we'll be asking the, the developer to provide to us. We have third party engineers on, you know, on call engineers under contract and we'll, who's that? Time bonding traffic too. They just actually acquired a firm that oh, does, perfect. yeah, does Where's traffic you? out of Boston. Okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so we'll be, we'll, you know, on behalf of the planning board, we'll have the third party reviewer review all that mm -hmm. and, and make any recommendation, necessary recommendations that they uh, feel are in the best interest of the city and, and the board. So, yeah. 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 Mr. Chairman, can I add a little something from the land trust? In one moment, please. I'd also, I'd, I'd also highly recommend uh, adding a landscape architect to your team. So that was part of what we were going to talk about that. Too. Yeah. So that okay. Was, yeah, and that's I think Trevor asked us some questions, but I think they're the next step in the process. I know. I think that's the. Last time we were said that we were trying to stay within the, the first half. Right now, the landscape architect was going to come in that next section. I think and that's what we were talking about. Too. Okay. So, so you and, and we did. We, Trevor did already alert us to that I, like, in there. So that was something that we did talk about. But uh, I don't know if there's. Uh, I don't. So I, I apologize. I was trying to keep the conversation to what we were just talking. I want to, if we can hammer away the lot part of it, and then. Uh, or any other I questions. Think, uh, landscape the architect becomes detail yeah. of, of of a plan, right? if any of the board members have any. Yep, carry on. <clears throat> Question on lots D through J on the front. Yep. How is that accessed? So these are going to be to, uh, tied to the, they'll go to the uh, Century Way abutters. They'll go to them. And so there, this, there's a stone wall that runs here along the zoning line. Yep. Some of the people have already kind of impeded onto the, the property of the applicant. Because they thought that was their backyard because everybody thinks the stone wall is their property, right? He's, he's giving, Which the stone wall is not their it. property. He's giving it to the And residents. so the, the intent of the project is to, to give these parcels to the people on Century Way to, to, to block off their, their property and they'll own all the property in GR3. And the, and the reason that that sort of came up, um, in my discussions with Attorney um, Flick, with some of the issues that were raised um, at the zoning board, especially with the, 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 the Chickwin property uh, and the right-of-way issue. Um, when, when he and I discussed that there would be some areas that might be abutting land or open, uh, he suggested that it would make sense that that land would go to the abutter because the only real use is for the abutter to use. So it's something that the applicant would, would consider and, and, it, and it works well um, for the area. So it almost it creates almost like a 150, 175 foot difference from the back of that lot to where their property line act really yeah, is. Yeah. Um, 
which those people should be happy. Yes. Well, I think it helps clean up. That's correct. Uh, and, and, and like I said, I thought that was uh, yeah. very nice. So there would be areas over here where there would be a parcel potentially to and a butter, an area over here uh, potentially, and then yeah. all along in here. So. Yeah, the butter over here has their two sheds and it, and it feeds onto the actually the applicant's land and so there's gonna be a parcel C over here that would clean that up okay. also so they would just retain that property that they have their sheds on um, and then the chickens would get a little bit of space there the questions from the board members I just like that I like the concept but I think it's too crowded Do you have anything else, Mr. Beauregard? Just a couple quick questions. I think um, I'd like to see uh, some common open space within the development uh, for the residents, uh, maybe some park space, some type of, you know, again, if you, if you have the landscape architect involved. That's, that's where he comes creating in. Creating some usable common open space within the development for the residents there. Um, you know, I, I, I don't think I'm asked for like tennis, tennis courts, basketball courts and stuff, because obviously then your homeowners association has to, to maintain, has to maintain that. But if you're, you know, if, if we're talking about cutting grass, having some out, you know, somewhere where they can actually recreate on site, um, and have there maybe some association functions, um, you know, neighborhood functions. Something to that sort. And, and it's one other thing, sure. um, linkages to your neighboring sites. Now, I know definitely there's trail systems down in the city land to the east. Yep. Um, I'm pretty sure there's some trail systems up on the North County Land Trust land and maybe even the city forest land to the north. So thinking about how you can link that development in to uh, those trail systems. And I don't see you doing that with without you know losing some of your not a lot but one or two lots here and there by creating those corridors yep. for the uh for the residents and possibly even a small parking area um for people to utilize within the development so like, maybe they both tie into each other but i, I know under the common sh common open space ownership right there's really three options the city of garter a nonprofit organization, which I know the land trust had already expressed interest of trying to acquire this open space. We approached them less, by the way. Oh, yeah. Okay, well, uh, she, yeah. she said something to me when we were on the sidewalk, so yeah. I, I was giving her, I apologize, gave her credit instead of. <laughs> and then. I, I, w I didn't say that to take credit, I just wanted then, then, to then clarify. That's all. Absolutely. Then an association, we did want to have an so we did not want to have an association as part of this project. We'd rather have the open space either go to the city or to a land trust. One, one of the, one of the um, things that was brought to my attention early on uh, was that there was always some type of an interest by the city um, to somehow acquire or own a majority of this piece for protection of the, the wetlands and for protection of the reservoir. Um, so one of the things that we thought might have been a logical conclusion was for the open space to go to the city. Uh, that's why I mentioned it to you the other day. But I'm sure we can strike a balance. And um, to locate it all on the exterior of the development and not. I, I know, I think the development that you had seen before did show a small area within this loop, a, a loop road similar to this. But again, we trying to balance what we thought was being told to us was more important was Tying this all open space together with that, and not have a uh, open space in there, and really, to, like I said, there was an intent not to have an, an association. We we're trying to design everything as a subdivision roadway. Eventually, get the, the city to take the roadway over, and not have any association over here. It just makes it a lot cleaner when the project's all said and done, not to have an association involved with this at all. Um, and so, there's we could do it a couple different ways. You know, we could do open space that has recreational on it, but I think it might, we, we thought it'd be better to have the, the trail system and tie into the trail system and have that, you know, and if it's put a couple trails in in a parking lot, instead of having a playground, it, it's, I mean, we can, yeah. we can do it either way. It's I, just a matter of where the open space is located, right? Yeah, I, I never said, I never said a playground, though. No, I don't well, think, I, I, I don't think I don't you want that. something that, it, you know, you're gonna have to put a lot of money into, maintain. Yeah. 
um, replace. Uh, I just I just think some open space, common open space within the development for the residents that you're building the de development for makes a lot of sense, because they're small lots. There's not going to be a lot of room on the lots once you build on them uh, for people to recreate outdoors uh, as a group or or individually. Um, other than the limited area within, with, on their lot. So just a thought, that's all. I mean, and... And that's why we, yeah, I'm just giving you a reason why we didn't do it yep. that way. Is we were trying to, I guess, balance what we were told is the important yeah. area. So we, wherever the open space goes, it doesn't really matter to us. It's, it's yeah. an acre of open space in the middle or open space in the outside. I would do, I would do right in the middle, it would probably look good. That is easily trafficable where a community could get together to have a social event. Yeah, yeah. maybe you have a, 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 a like a... Um, a like a fire pit or... The idea. <laughs> or, a, or a, what do you call those things? Uh, pavilion. Pavilion, yeah. yeah pavilion. Yeah. Pavilion for outdoor, you know, barbecues or whatever. Yes, sir. So if we were to have... A, go back to your question about small lots. If we were to have a central open space... Okay. Would you still... Would you be okay with the smaller lots? It's the first time I've heard of it. Would I be okay? Well, that's up to the boards, I suppose. Well, I'm not right. So, you, obviously, if we do have that. We are eliminating some lots, so I probably wouldn't. Uh, okay. No, we would just take open space from one area to another area. Like where? Or, I thought he mentioned maybe towards the middle where those lots are. Well, that, we could either take it from here or take it from the back. We, we could, we could, like I said, the roadways aren't set in stone. Right. We're not. A, we're not even. A, right, we're not even at the preliminary stage yet. We're at a conceptual. Well, stage. we. I think we're all in agreement. We like the concept. We like right, the okay. design of that. But, I think a I, couple of us like, mentioned that, yeah, a little bit maybe. You know what I'm saying? If it's, I change it a little bit and put some open space in the middle, that's, that's correct. We still keep the same yeah. amount of lots. I think the, a couple uh, of us, or two or three of us, think the lots are still too small. And that's what I asked if it's a trade off where we have common open space in the middle. Yeah. I think that's regressing, though, from yeah. the, what you're presenting to us now, um, incorporating some other aspects, but then changing the design so you maintain what you have so and, and then lessen the benefit to the city by by reducing the amount of overall open space so well, not the, overall, the overall open space has to stay the way it is the number has to stay the way it is right your calculations are very specific the amount of open space that they're required to provide has to stay that number yeah and it has to be we're at uh, almost 68 acres, 67 and a half acres of open space, right? Of a 90s, what, 90s, 90 acre property, right? I think it's so. Or whatever the, the total area is. Yeah, so, like you, so you're over your 50%. Well, we are because you can't include wetlands. Yeah. Right? You can't include wetlands so, in your calculation. Right. So including, including the wetlands. Including wetlands, we're well over 50% of the yeah, entire property. But not including them, where are you at? What's that? Not including the wetlands, where are you at? We're at 50 percent. You are over 50 percent. Yeah, because that's, that's the way, that we're, at least the way I read the wording, and, and I check with Peter too, who's our attorney, right? So, so the way I understood what you just said, though, by creating common open space within the... So in here, yeah. I would be looking at changing the roadway layout a little bit to come out here right. to create an open bubble in here. So the total area of open space doesn't change. It's just how it's located. Or do we make this a 50-foot strip? And take that 50 foot strip and put it in between those lots. So, but, there, there's ways to. But, Wes, what I think I'm, I'm saying, and I think what Paul's saying is creating a common open space yeah. increases your open space. So, you, now you're providing somewhat greater amount of open space. Well, we're. And, 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 you're, and you're getting your. So, you're asking your, for a reduction of lots now. So well, now you're asking for reduction um, of lots by making lots bigger, and you're actually well, it's all lots the pets. Well, again, there, there there is a balance. Yeah, there you know we're we're asking for different things. So, and we're just making these recommendations. So yeah. then you can go back to the drawing board and, and figure out how you want to right. apply them and not get too caught up in the weeds right now. Right. But, well, but I, right. I ask the question is I don't want to come back and uh, again. The num max number of units, right, we were talking, max number of units is 93 out here, okay, by, by your zoning requirements. We're not doing 93 units. We could have proposed duplexes and, and done that and been at 93 units, but we're at 76 
lots, single family lots. We're providing the 100 foot buffer between the residents and the, and the open space and the exterior because that's the way we were led to believe that was the more important area. If you want more open space in, in the center, we're gonna take open space on the outside away because at some point the, the project becomes uneconomical. I'm not saying I want it. I'm saying it's, I, I, I would recommend doing it for the residents that you're building. Well, I'm sorry. But that's why we're having the conversation today because I don't want to, I don't want to have a full design done and come back and say, well, that's, we're not approving this, right? I'd rather have the conversation today and let's yeah. get those items on the table. And that's why I asked the question to Mr. Cormier. I said, if we were to provide open space in the middle, would you be okay with the lots being the size they were? Because now we're providing them an open space in the middle that they can all congregate. Because that was the concern is, you have a small lot, you don't have an area to, to have, a, have a party, right? I mean, we could have a gathering. And then, or are we better off having a 50 foot strip here and a 50 foot strip in the middle there to have that common you know, open space? There's a million ways to do this, but I, that's why I asked the question to the board members because at the end of the day, you guys are voting on it, right? So apparently you don't want to deviate from 76 lots. Is that correct? I know the number of lots. No, is that correct, sir? It, it's going to be critical. Is it 76? Yeah. That's what you want, and that's where you're standing by. Well, the 76, 74, you're, and you're, around that number. And you're still you're stern at 76. Well, I don't want to say well, well, I don't know. I'm just asking you. You don't have to look at anybody else. Well, they're, they're, they're well, the people. They're, 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 they're the ones that make the decision. Well, just, I, I don't make the decision. I, don't, I, don't I understand. Them, but I'm just telling you. But you, you're putting us in a difficult position oh, that, yeah. you're, that your group, what, 76 lots. But I don't, I, don't, I don't think we should just, it's hard to just, have a discussion about the number of lots without taking into consideration. Well, he just said he didn't want to come back unless. But the gentleman finish. But I think what what the whole purpose of the open space residential development um, takes other matters into consideration, um, sensitive areas, things of that nature. Um, what we're proposing, instead of coming in with say 80 lots or 86 lots or 90 lots. Units, units. We uh, units, units, I'm sorry. Units. Okay, units. Um, we, we, we obviously looked at this, we had discussions with the applicant and if we were to look at all of the elements that are in your open space, the reason why we make these proposals, mm -hmm. we felt that 76 lots was already a concession uh, in the sense that we know we could put more, um, but that just would be something that wouldn't fly, probably would be more resistance. So we've already done that. That's why I think if we look at the regulations and we follow the reason why we're making this proposal, um, the, the 76 lots is already a concession of a significant number of lots. Okay. So, we felt it was a good balance between what could go in there by right and what might be able to go in there by right with a little more force um, versus you know, utilizing the open space regulation to balance between keeping the open space, having other things come into consideration, but still making the development economically viable um, for, for all parties involved. Mr. Chairman, yes. so Wes, what's the percentage of open space at this point in time on the site? You, including wetlands? No. So no. not including wetlands? Yeah, so meeting the 50% criteria. So like I said, we have 77,000 square feet more than we need to meet that number. Um, we are at... Uh, yeah, acre and a half, acre and three quarters. We're 52%. Yeah. So how many more units are you gonna be able to fit on the extra two percent of property? Well it's not we wouldn't change the we would change the lot lines and make instead of single family we'd make duplexes. Yeah. To get ready to get the units. Right, we're talking units, we're not talking lots. So your well, regulation calls units. It's one unit per forty thousand okay. square feet. Yeah. So that's that's why when Mr. Kepelas was trying to say apples and apples, like mm -hmm. we're also trying to talk units and units, and that's why, like on the by right plan, I show a number of lots, but also a number of units, yeah. because your your OS, OSRD regulations talk units, not lots, right? right. So because I it, 
I can't speak on behalf of the board, but if you came in here with a project with two family homes on every lot, you're not going to get the special permit. Well, it wouldn't be every lot, but it would be it would be spread out, right? So what, and, we're talking single family homes, right? Yeah. Well, that's that, that's the preferred option for the, the yeah. Yeah, right? yeah. They, yeah they, absolutely. They, I think that would work very. I think well. it fits better, and I know there is some multifamily houses out there, but that's not mm -hmm. the intent of it. You know, there's plenty of multifamily that we walk by, right, on Century Way that yeah, abuts this, right? Yeah, that's correct. Um, but really, we're, we're trying to fit this in with the single family that's been going on out there, the rest of the there is really single family. Oh, I know. I, I just have a question about the 100-foot strip. Could you, uh, for, for the uh, record, could you, your name and your affiliation? Oh, yes, I'm Joanne Christoph, the Director of Land Protection for North County Land Trust, which is the land trust that covers Gardner. And we are an abutter to this project. Um, I have a number of comments, but my question right now is whether the 50% open space calculation includes that 100 foot wide yep. buffer strip. Yes, it does. Yep. Um, I will speak out on behalf of the land trust to say that that does not provide um, any benefit to your organization. Not even a little bit. <laughs> and, and again, we don't. We don't necessarily, again, we, I know the applicants would be fine, I think, given all the open space to you at the, at the correct me if I'm wrong, Ron, right? I mean, you would, you would say, yes, we have to give you all the open spaces, but if you don't want it, then our next well, stop. I, I just want to make sure city. that if it's in the calculation, yep. um, that, that, it is. that changes how I think about the, the 50%. Um, Mr. Chairman, do you want me to keep going with my comments, or do you want to get back to me when, when it's, Good time for you. When do you have to be? I have another hour. Okay. <laughs> thank you, though. <coughs> Carry on in brief, would you? Well, thank you. Thank you. I will. Um, so, the first thing I want to say is that the open space residential development uh, ordinance that the city of Gardner has is a great thing for Gardner. It's a great thing for developing housing that's very much needed everywhere in Massachusetts right now. And it's a great thing for protecting open space, especially open space that abuts already protected over open space like the city forest and North County Land Trust's uh, Rome Conservation Area. Um, and it's all, a, it's all a balancing act, developing housing and providing ecologically viable um, open land that makes life on this planet possible. <laughs> um, I, do think, I do think the engineering is jumping the gun a little bit. I know you're coming back with preliminary subdivision plans. And I, and I understand that the, the OSRD process is really counterintuitive to many engineers who who start with, with roads and then fill in the house lots, and this process asks you to do it completely backwards. As Trevor was saying, uh, existing conditions, site conditions, um, mature trees, there aren't too many out there, but there are some. The network of cart roads and logging roads and woods roads, um, the wetlands, which are shown on the plan, but have not yet been submitted to the Conservation Commission. Um, I've been through OSRD many, many times in the town of Ayr. Um, we have yet to find an engineering firm that, that follows the stepwise plan that so carefully laid out in a bylaw or ordinance. Um, and I understand why that is. I'm a recovering building contractor myself. <laughs> um, I just let you know what I think about the 100 foot um, buffer strip there. Um, it's disconnected from the other open space by roadways, so it has really next to no ecological value. I understand it has social value to be, be a butter, and that's not to be completely discounted. Um, North County Land Trust would very much like to uh, acquire the fee interest in the open space. We would probably then put a conservation restriction on it with another land trust so that it's just doubly, triply protected from 
from uh, being developed ever. Um, and my last point is that the houses in the middle of the loop have no access to, to the open space. So I would love to see um, at least two, possibly three, um, deeded sort of fingers that come to the roadway so that we're not walking over somebody else's yard to get to the open space. Uh, I think that's something Trevor was interested in also. Yeah, that is what someone, and that's one of the things we found out there. Yep, and, and so if that, you know, if you, if you have to lose a couple of lots, I, I understand you, you come to a, a meeting like this um, asking for the moon, and, and we work backwards from there to uh, something that's reasonable and in balance and gives the developer the ability to uh, develop the property, but also makes for a livable uh, neighborhood. This, this is kind of dense. Um, I, I, I understand that. Um, the value to the outside houses backing up to protected open space um, results in higher prices for those houses. There's Mass Audubon has all kinds of statistics about how houses that abut directly abut uh, protected open space have more value than than the houses in the in the middle. And yet, in an OSRD, the houses in the middle should be able to get into the open space across uh, a deeded access way. Um, I think that's all I have to say at the moment. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your contribution. Again, I think that's where a landscape architect would be invaluable. Um, where I'm getting hung up is if they were massage a bubble, for lack of a better term, of, of open space there in the cluster in the middle, I, I, I can't envision exactly how that would work. Well, there are a couple different ways we could do it is shrink this to 50 feet. Oh, yeah. Take some of the open space and put it in there, right? And, and move the road closer to Century Way and, and create that open opening there. Or take some of the open space in the back and, and push this up that way. Okay, yeah. I, I wasn't and, and those are the, the two ways I, at least trying to lay it out and still trying to keep, obviously, the somewhat of a buffer to the residents. There, uh, but maybe it's not 100, maybe it's 50 feet. Um, you know, the single family residences are still going to get those parcels, it doesn't really change. You know, that, that issue is going to be that strip there. There's a fairly good slope in here between that and the, the multifamily dwellings, so there's a, a, a natural wall, I guess, of earth there that kind of creates a little bit of a buffer for them where they sit down a little low. So, if we go to a 50 foot buffer there, it doesn't that's where I would, I guess, start to. You know, trade from there to there. Uh, yeah, I'd hate to see that hundred footer get get shaved. Yes, just for the sake of your your other rebutters there. So that kind of brings me towards access points to the trails and the woods and the fields and, and so on and so forth that that our guest one, mentioned. One, one of the things that I I did is I, I did leave a hundred foot buffer here between this and that parcel just to to make it uniform. And I, I did look at putting a parcel here and getting rid of a parcel in the back there and splitting up. That access, so, so we would have whatever 20 foot strip, a couple 20 foot strips along the way there, whatever the case is, so we get some fingers in there to provide that access. So, there's something that I did look at previously, but you know, from a trying to keep that corridor there. But if, if, if this is a useless corridor from this, you know, hearing from the land trust that the corridors would be better suited up here, it doesn't really matter to, to us uh, how that gets moved around. So, one lot gets removed out here and kind of gets spread out with 20 foot fingers in, and then. We just re, you know changed a lot there because it's <coughs> it's kind of just dead space there. So yeah, that that I don't again not speaking for all my colleagues here. That kind of appeals to me. You get that you get that a little bit of a little bit of elbow room. Uh, you're still maintaining a, you know, a decent amount of lot. So again, you have an economically viable project, and you get those corridors out into the open space. And just just to clarify. My um, it, it was always my understanding, and I uh, really didn't understand uh, until I had the conversation yesterday with Trevor and, and hearing the comments today, 
it was always my understanding <coughs> that the city uh, was very uh, much wanting this property. So we kind of viewed it as, okay, just block it off, if you will, for lack of a better term. If the city wants it to protect that back area, <coughs> they're ultimately gonna have it, then, but obviously based on my conversation yesterday with Trevor and the comments we're hearing today, there's a little more integration of open space and areas that you're looking for. Mr. Chair, if I can just comment real quick on that. Yeah. So oh, I, I think it is the, the city's um, priority to, whether it owns it or not, to set aside that property for open space because of its close proximity to the backup water supply. I think the challenge comes in if the city owns it as as open space, we're required to, to um, submit reports to the state every year. We don't do that. Okay. North Carolina Land Trust, our partner in, in other projects that, you know, that owns other property within the city does do that. Mm -hmm. They have staffing capacity to do that. We don't. And that's why we bring them in as a partner because they're good stewards and they and that's that's what they do. And what so I've seen makes in the past is, is a, a deed that would run <coughs> the developer to the, yes. with a statutory reference to the general laws that puts it as a conservation restriction. <coughs> right, so it would be Article 97 yep. land. And, yep. and then we would also put a conservation restriction on okay. it just belt and suspenders. All right. Anything else, gents? Just real quick, Mr. Chairman, if I may, mm -hmm. make sure you check yourself good for ticks. That's yes. I, pull, yes. I, pull, I pulled one off me during the meeting. Oh, oh did you really? Oh, yeah. Jeez. <laughs> Great. <laughs> All right, so uh, approaching, approaching it, uh, those fingers, as we call them, uh, it might cost you a couple lots, a few lots, but g give that a shot with your, your talent. And your skill, and let's see. I go for that. All right, this isn't uh, this isn't an item that we're voting on. This is just a uh, so, working meeting. No, 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 that's good. So I, I guess are we done? Is the board done the conversation about those items? Because I guess at the end we want to get to what's the next step, right? Or, or where where are we going to go next on this? Um, and I know that was we're making sure we kind of keep moving up. You know your checklist. Yeah. What's what's next here? Um, so I don't know if we're going before before we we done with the, move on the next steps. Trevor, you good? I'm good. Okay. Yeah. I have nothing yeah. to add at this point. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So next steps. So at least, and, um, my thought was that we would just submit a preliminary subdivision plan first. A preliminary plan, I think, but it's going to be a preliminary subdivision. Whether, plan, right? you know, the, no, not the open space uh, special permit yet, um, more of a preliminary plan that starts to incorporate a lot more of what we've discussed today uh, to get a sense so that if we can really have a preliminary plan that everybody's comfortable with, then we move to, you know, the actual application and what have you. Along with the site concept plans that we talked about today um, produced by a landscape architect with the well so I guess with with no wait, well let me finish first with the process that so the next time we meet we can go through the process that's outlined in the zoning under five two five, eight, two, eight, 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 eight. yeah so the, the landscape architect part of it and so it's going to be a I guess a working they're going to be working together. It's not going to be a plan that they really prepare because they're going to use the plans that our existing conditions plan to outline areas that they think are, um, I guess, important. Yeah, I, I understand. Right? And that's, they, but they I have to make sure there, because when we get, and it's funny because when we do subdivisions, the, when we bring a landscape architect on, it's when the design is getting done. They're, they're, they're on to bring the, Understood. the, the prettiness to the, the project, yeah. right? And yeah. so, a lot of the items that we already pointed out, they're going to point out again to you. They're just going to look at... It may be more. Yes. Maybe more. Yep. <laughs> and that's why we want them involved. Yes, but I'm just, I'm just saying it's not going to... 
I know. It, it's going to be a, a together. It's not going to just be them preparing a plan I, to you. I, yeah. I just want to make sure that's that's clear because I, I I know the way it's worded. To me, it's very odd. And I, I asked the guys in the office, have you ever done a landscape architect and done a subdivision? We couldn't think of one that a landscape architect has done uh, because it's usually engineers and surveyors that do subdivision. So that we, was, yeah. it was an odd odd section in your regulations. But being an open space residential development. I think it's important to have that that uh, professional insight into it at, at an early stage. I don't. I, I, I would be fair to characterize it as, as that individual would be working in consultation with well, you. And that's what we want to make sure. Yeah. Right. And, we understand. And, and that was my point. I don't think it says that we have to have a landscape architect present separate plans. It, it really just says that. He has to be able. He or she has to be able to demonstrate Part of the process. that we incorporated the items that are in five two A B C and D in our design, so that we can point it out to the board. That's my understanding, which yeah. is why I use the word yeah. consultant. Yeah. And that, that's why we just want to make sure because it was yeah. That's all. Yeah. We want to make sure we're on the same. So you are drawings. Yeah. Well, just make sure. No, but just make sure that we we're on the same page. We didn't want to come back and have a consultation plan. Then and then, okay, well, you guys aren't doing the right thing. That's all. That's yeah, I think we And I, I know there has that. been a lot of when was the last cluster Brookside? Yeah, and that was done before. So that was done the, under under, 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 a, so. under a different right. So there's, there's no, yeah. and, so there's nothing. There's no. There's nothing to look at that say okay. Well, here's here's what somebody else did. To, right, we're kind of blazing the new trail with regards to the regulation, right? So unfortunately, to my knowledge, no, there isn't because the zoning was different with Brookside, which you just said. Yeah, right. and it was amended in the mid-2000s, which may have, I don't <clears> think it impacted it because it was already approved. I'm not sure exactly what they amended. Though. Which was before I, our time. I, I, so, I, yeah, yeah, yes, sir. yes, sir, thank you. Yeah. All right, Mr. Paul, you had something? Yeah, so before we close this, uh, I just wanna make sure that we're on, uh, the uh, young lady over there from uh, North County Land Trust, she she mentioned maybe taking a couple lots on the top so people from the middle could go right through open space. But then you commented that you'd use that bottom spot. No, no, no. What I'm saying is we'll lose one or two up here. Right. But you're not going to build on that spot. Uh, there. Yes. Yes. You want to. Yeah. To make up a lot. We'll lose a lot up here. we make a lot up well, here. You, well, Again, that, that defeats the purpose maybe for these people living on there. They, they won't be able to get anywhere. Living on where? On well, Century no, no, no. Way, or so they wouldn't be I, able to. If I, what I'm saying is, if I lose a lot, which is 80 feet wide, I could put four 20 foot strips going out to the back land space out here. So everybody in this area out here could get out to a walking path. I understand your concern. So those people down on Century Way, sir, on the bottom there? Yeah. They would just come up and we would have a 20 foot strip instead of a 100 foot strip. Is what I'm saying. So how are they going to get over there? I mean, you're saying well, because if you well, want to put a, if you want to put a lot here, we would, we would, I, would, I would put it in here instead. Okay. What I would say I, is, look I don't at, think we need to worry about look at this line here and, and winning right now. It's yeah, just, yeah, yeah. I, there's no sense to get caught up in the minutiae or the weeds right now. Right. We can hash that out when they. I understand. Yeah. I just didn't concerned. want to make extra work. And let let me show you what we're thinking, and if if you want something different, we can. Okay. But that's what I'm saying because. Access to the wetlands is really, it's not getting anywhere, right? That's right. A good thing. If it's a 20 foot strip here instead, I think okay. it's a better, That's better right. suited location, right? And I think we're talking about trying to make it more accessible, open space. I'm just trying to make it desirable for these people that live yeah. on, these, on these streets that come up that there's not already a house right on there, on, right on top of their property. That's all. So well, that last person there, I mean, I'm just trying to make yeah. sure yeah. Uh, Brookside Drive, uh, these people, they should have buffers. And, and, and I see you have it, and like I said, I, I, I do like the concept. I have no problem with that. Yeah. And you've, you've helped these people on the bottom, and, and obviously you help these people on Clark Street because it's not so close to their house either. So, but I'm just trying to make sure that everybody has a chance to... Well, there is yep. two, uh, an acre, acre and a half of land in between, okay. right, yep. between Brookside and... Right. And so that's... Okay. So it was just a, it was just a corridor. I, I think the corridor is better placed on Okay, that's so, fine, sir. That's what I was going to say. That's fine. That's why I just tripped. Hey, one more comment. By all uh, means. Since it's been on my mind the whole time, and I think it was mentioned out in the field, but, and maybe Joanne can um, offer her opinion on it, but that 100 foot buffer um, is it a possibility to put a walking trail through there, um, possibly even a paved trail for the use of the residents? 
probably somewhere through the middle of it. And I'm just thinking out loud. I just, uh, came to my head when I was out there, and um, it would make it it would make it a little more, yep. I think, practical okay. as an open space area. As a, uh, as a uh, as a, an amenity, a, re a recreation an, an amenity, really not. Right. It wouldn't yeah. be ecological open space, but Correct, it would be yeah. psychological open yeah. space, yeah. which has value also. Yeah, and again, more like it, a right of way than really open space for people to access. It. Right. Right. Yeah, like a recreational trail, and we've been doing a lot of that throughout the city, um, more in the downtown, but you know, up the 140 and uh, all the way down to the Hubbardson line on 68. So trying to get people to use more types of, um, yeah, tri yeah. Mm -hmm. multimodal transportation opportunities. But that's just something I thought, I thought about. And you could maintain a buffer between the rear yards and, and the path back there. Um, just a thought. And again, that, Joanne used the word amenities. You know, as an open space residential development, and again, I go back to my open space comment. There are absolutely no amenities on this site for the residents there. Right. So just keep that in mind as you go back to the drawing board. And right, and Mr. Chair, if I could just add, the, the landscape architect requirement of the ordinance would, would help shape this space. You know, they. The, the, the thing that engineers think about landscape architects is that they just shrub it up, you know, they plant the, plant the shrubs at the end of the project. But, but landscape architects are really trained to shape space using buildings and, and planting materials and walls and whatnot, and they, they really do connect people to their environment that way. So I, I think, I think it's a great, a great line in the in the OSRD to require a landscape architect. And if you could think about them as shaping space rather than just making things pretty, uh, it might be easier to swallow. But not not to swallow. It's just <laughs> I, I I just have too many bad experiences about them not looking at the regulation and just looking at ah. making it pretty. That's okay. Good. And, and we are. We have at least four different regulations I can think of off the top of my head that we are beholden to on this project mm -hmm. that yes. they need to be aware of also. So that's, that's right. where it's, it's a fine line, right? Where it is. It's about, all of this is a balance. Correct. If it, if it wasn't a subdivision, yeah. it'd be, there'd be a little more flexibility there, but it's a subdivision too. So there's some regulations yeah. that we need to. And at the end of the day, it needs to be somewhere that people want to live and, uh, you know, balancing density with desirability is something that is that it, members of the board? All in? Trevor, can I ask one question? Go ahead, Mr. Chair. Sorry, Mr. Chair. Well, the reason I was going to ask Mr. Chair, can I ask Trevor a question? It's more procedural time, timeline wise. And the reason I asked you the question is because it's going to come from your office. When we submit a preliminary plan, how long in advance do you need it before a beginning? To get, because it's going to be a preliminary plan that you still put in the newspaper? Yeah. Right. Yeah, we'll have to, to, we'll have to put the ad plan. seven days in advance. Yeah. Um, I know, maybe I, yeah. Can we talk offline on that? Okay. I, I, I can't give you a, a date right now. Okay, I know we're so close to the next meeting, I can't imagine we're going to meet the next meeting, but I just want to make sure we're not. Yeah. May 9th, I am likely. Right. Yeah, because I mean, there's a, I, I'd like to have a re review period with staff internal, um, and then you know advertise it a week in advance. I believe that's what the um, requirements are. So let's let's talk. Okay. It. I mean, our next meeting is May 9th, and so we probably we won't make that one. Um, I'm not sure if. If the boards would be able to meet again in May, um, that's something I'm going to have to discuss with them. And so then in the meeting after that, is, next meeting is June 13th. June 15th? 13th. 13th. Yeah, second Tuesday of the month. Um, I know that pushes it kind of far out, but it's... It's not that far. Yeah. <laughs> I, I asked the question just so it's out yeah. there, right? So. so I think, you know, I mean, I think it's... I think it's 
if if everything if depending on where you guys are at, yeah. Yeah. Um, I, we could probably shoot for the June thirteenth. But let me let's talk about it offline okay. as far as when I need all the information by and all that, and we can set up a timeline. Okay. Right. Thank you. Is that good, Mr. Jim? Yes. That's okay. Yeah. If we're gonna do an off-cycle meeting, we we can do that too. Yeah. Assuming everyone's available. Yeah. Okay. We'll get to that. Now I'm thinking about this. <laughs> 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 so, 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 I just felt it under my shirt. I'm like, yeah. All right, bravo. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you guys very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for coming out for the walk. Thank you. And thank you to everybody that participated in the uh, site walk today. And survived. <laughs> 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 Except the one or two, one or two that is still out there. Yeah. <laughs> All right, gentlemen. Next meeting, uh, Tuesday, May 9th at 6:30. Do we have any other closing business? Any details? Any mop up? Make a motion. Well, thank you, sir. Second. Motion made and seconded to adjourn. Uh, any discussion? Hearing none. By voice vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? We are adjourned. Thank Thanks. you.